Greetings, ladies and ladies, and a happy new year to you. I hope you had a wonderful start into this new year and set yourself a lot of exciting goals, be it for your hobby or otherwise. Coming into the new year right after Christmas, there's a good chance you have quite a lot of these laying around. And if you're anything like me, you have quite a lot of trouble throwing stuff away in hopes that you might repurpose it later someday. As tabletop gamers, you surely do know what I mean. Yeah. Usually, that day never really comes, but today we want to make such an attempt by transforming an ordinary cardboard box like this into something rather impressive. And I will show you how. Before we begin, I want you to know that this is not necessarily meant as a tutorial which you are meant to follow to the letter, but rather as a guide walking you through the process so that you may build anything you'd like on your table yourself. The first thing we have to do is, of course, make a plan, starting with our vision. As this is my first time building terrain completely from scratch, I wanted to start with something not too difficult and settled for a classic medieval fantasy house. Or better, a ruin of said house, as the ruins are not only more exciting to look at, but are also better suited for the average battle map and miniature deployment. After getting our ideas on the paper, we need to start translating our vision into an actual plan, which really sounds way more complicated than it actually is. Basically, we just have to imagine what shapes we need to cut out of the cardboard, so we can assemble our house with them later. The templates I'll be using today will also be available as PDF, so you can print it at home and have your first go right away. To get the right size for our house, I just took one of the newer human models from GW for reference and made it so that they could walk through the house comfortably. I'm not using my heroes here, because they are all epically oversized chats not meant to represent any standards in our world. We need just one piece for every side of the house, and if you use sturdy flat cardboard here, you can reuse this pattern as often as you like. We sketch every template twice onto the cardboard, and then cut it out using a hobby knife. Scissors would work too, but the knife is definitely more exact here. Having all the walls as well as the floor ready, we take up a fine liner and draw the details we want our house to have onto the walls, meaning things like windows, doors, but also stuff like half timbering and lisanes. This may take some time, but it's definitely worth it, as it really helps to get a more concrete idea of the later house, and also makes sure that we won't forget anything in the end. Though as this will be all covered up, don't bother to make the sketch too detailed. Now. As I mentioned in the beginning, we want our house to lay in ruins, which is why we need to now sketch in the damaged part of the walls. Here you can just do whatever you want. Just pay attention with damage that spans more than one wall, so it connects at the right places. Cutting out the damage we want our building to have, as well as windows and doors, everything is ready to be assembled. And we can start by gluing the walls for the ground floor together. To support the walls where they meet, I just took some burned out matches and used them as small support beams. When all of the walls are joined together, it's time to fix them onto a base of cardboard. You don't have to make it this big though. If the base is just slightly bigger than the house's footprint, it's totally enough. If you have any at home, burned out sparklers are the perfect material to use as window braces. For small windows like these, we cut them down into struts of 2.5cm in length, and are quickly left with enough for the whole house. Then we need to prepare the windows with window sills made from thin cardboard. Optimally, the cardboard's wave pattern is facing upwards, so we can easily insert the rods from above. It is possible to do this with the straight pattern facing up, though it is a little bit more tricky. Either way, the horizontal struts just get glued on from the inside. One of the windows is broken in half, and to make the braces reflect that, we just have to bend them a bit to the inside, and we are left with a truly awesome detail. Now it's time to test fit the floor, 
and sketch in the hole we wanted to have. After cutting that space out, we can glue it to the walls of the first floor. The rough work is now mostly done, and the house is really coming together. For the planks of the floor, I used the cardboard from a candy box, as it is sturdy but thin, which makes it excellent for detailing. Having it cut into individual boards, it's time for a test fit, which we also need to determine the actual length they'll need here. Also remember that wooden floorboards do not just run along the entirety of a room, but are made from many smaller boards fit together. This bit of makeshift carpentry surely does take some time, but the result is absolutely worth it. The last thing we need to do here is to roughen up the boards on the whole to emphasize the damage. Now we need to cover up these insides into the cardboard pattern on the side, as the origin of our house should not be so easily detectable. The key to this box lies in my keyboard cardboard box. This material is thinner than the cardboard of the walls, yet thicker than the cardboard of the floor, and therefore perfect for large pieces like lisane bricks or half timbering on the wall. We start with the lisanes, cutting the cardboard into the desired sizes and weakening them at the places where we want them to bend, as they will otherwise fight way too hard against our will. And even with all that, holding the stones in place still takes quite some time. After these bricks are finally all in place, we bring out the window frames with the same thin cardboard as for the floorboards, but for the half timbering, I would still recommend you to use a sturdy cardboard. Now we come to the roof, and honestly, I have no real guide for you here. I am pretty bad at maths, and Pythagoras was never my buddy, so I put the roof together going with the trial and error method, which, in all honesty, worked quite a lot smoother than you might think. Just make sure that the roof fits on the walls, and you should be good to go. On my part, it was a little bit too small, but with some small reinforcement beams on the inside of the room, the roof is finally in place. Having the rough shape in place, it's time for the detailing, starting with the roof struts some of the later roofing tiles will lay on. I used a big match for the pediment, and some regular cardboard for the other ones. Of course, this is not enough to sell us a fully fledged roof, so the next thing we need to do is to get ourselves some roofing tiles. I chose to roughen up the lower side of each and every tile, as I want them to look like old wood before finally gluing them on, starting from the bottom row. We could have them ready in strips of tiles instead of placing each one individually, but I really want to see just how much further we can take this project. After all of the areas are covered, we are left with a line like this on the edges, where the supporting cardboard is still visible. To cover those areas up, we take some tiles like these and place them on top of the other tiles along the edges of the roof. This is how it looks like now, and if we wanted to, we could definitely move on to the painting stage already, but I want to give you a little more ideas for your own houses. Using some used matches again, I want to build a little ruined shed as seen in the sketch from the beginning. I thought they'd be a perfect match for this, as I want it to look partially burnt down and the real wood also brings in a great texture. Placing some last roofing tiles and the shed on the side is done. In the following clips I'm adding even more details like a door which has been kicked in or some boards to nail the lower windows shut. Remember, you can take a house like this as far as you want, although we should remind ourselves to not go too overboard, or else we might obstruct the place we want our minis to take on the table. The house is now finally complete, and wow does it look cool already. Hard to believe we got all of this just from scrap that we are going to throw away anyway. And with the following paint job, it'll look just like the stuff that you can buy from companies like Citeridis or even GW. But instead of, you know, leading you through each and every step, as well as all of the different paints, I just want to give you a general overview, as the color scheme really isn't the important thing here, but the techniques we're gonna use are. After the first layer of our base color, we take a sponge and dab on some highlights onto the flat areas, simultaneously achieving a great texture in the process. 
When painting smaller details, a brush will suit you better though. The important thing is to create depth by gradually highlighting the middle sections of your build. Yes, you heard that right. The middle sections need to be highlighted and the edges need to be left looking darker. While you watch me paint up the rest of the upper floor, let me briefly tell you that I'm really happy to do videos like this for such an amazing audience. I know my channel is not really big enough to call itself that, at least for now anyway, but I gotta say the support and even requests I get from you guys are absolutely amazing. I mean, some of you guys even wished me Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, which really baffled me in the best way possible. That being said, in the following months I will most likely need to take a step back from making YouTube in favor of producing art to enlist in illustration studies at university. I am, quite literally, on the brink of art. In short, there will still be videos, just slightly not as frequently. Anyway, we finished the paint job by reinforcing the contrast on the half timbering with some pure black. For the base, I mixed up some classic dark green, as that was not only the best contrast I could think of, but it also fits my current battle tables. You can of course do whatever suits your table the best. Last but not least, we finished the build with some neat ornamental details. Spare bits from some old Fantasy Imperial sets suit this building perfectly. And with that, we are finally done. Oh boy. This is not meant as some sort of self praise, but I am just surprised at how cool this looks. Like, I hate working with paper. I needed a full day to fold an origami dragon once. Plus, this thing is entirely made from trash. No fancy equipment, a budget of literally zero euros, and this amazing house is what you're left with. I hope you had a great time watching this video and maybe feel motivated to try it out for yourself too. The PDF file for the templates of this exact building are down in the description, as well as a full guide about the paint job you see here. Please feel free to suggest other buildings that I should try to build out of cardboard, and if you have any questions or other ideas, be my guests and share them in the comments section. If you like this video, feel free to recommend it to a friend, and if you want to see more of the other exciting stuff that I have planned for this year, feel free to hit the subscribe button, as I am really looking forward to seeing you again in my next video. Until then, take care.